tragical history of Dr. Faustus, a new version of Christopher Marlowe's play by Sue Wilson with a musical score by Anthea Gomez, with Stephen Moore as Dr. Faustus, Philip Voss as Mephistopheles, Barry Rutter as the clown, and Morris Denham as the old man. The tragical history of Dr. Faustus. My lords! Not marching now in fields of Thracimene, where Mars did mate the Carthaginians, nor sporting in the dalliance of love in courts of kings, where state is overturned, nor in the pomp of proud, audacious deeds, intends our muse to vaunt his heavenly verse. Only this, gentlemen, we must perform, the form of Faustus' fortunes, good or bad. To patient judgment we appear our plaud and speak for Faustus in his infancy. Now is he born, his parents' base of stock, in Germany, within a town called Rhodes. Of riper years to Wittenberg he went, whereas his kinsmen chiefly brought him up. So soon he profits in divinity. The fruitful plot of scholarism graced that shortly he was graced with doctor's name excelling all whose sweet delight disputes in heavenly matters of theology, till, swollen with cunning of a self-conceit, his waxen wings did mount above his reach, and melting heavens conspired his overthrow, for falling to a devilish exercise, and glutted more with learning's golden gifts, he surfeits upon cursed necromancy. Nothing so sweet as magic is to him, which he prefers before his chiefest bliss. And this the man that in his study sits. Settle thy studies, Faustus, and begin to sound the depth of that thou wilt profess. Having commenced, be a divine in show, yet level at the end of every art and live and die in Aristotle's works. Sweet analytics, tis thou hast ravished me. Bene de celere est finis logices. Oh, is to dispute well logic's chiefest end? Affords this art no greater miracle? Then read no more, thou hast attained that end. A greater subject fitteth Faustus' wit, Bid on Camion, farewell. Galen, come. Seeing you be desinite philosophus, ibi incipit medicus, be a physician. Faustus, heap up gold and be eternized for some wondrous cure. Summum bonum medicini sanitas. The end of physic is our body's health. Why, Faustus, hast thou not attained that end? Is not thy common talk sound aphorisms? Are not thy bills hung up as monuments whereby whole cities have escaped the plague and thousand desperate maladies been eased? Yet art thou still but Faustus and a man. Wouldst thou make man to live eternally, or being dead raise them to life again, then this profession were to be esteemed. Physic, farewell. Where is Justinian? Sciuna eademque ris, lengata duobus, alterem alter valorum rei. Petty case of paltry legacies. 
Exhereditary filium non potest pater nisi. Such is the subject of the institute and universal body of the law. This study fits a mercenary drudge who aims at nothing but external trash, too servile and illiberal for me. When all is done, divinity is best. Jerome's Bible. Faustus, view it well. Stipendium peccati mors est. <laughs> Stipendium. The reward of sin is death. That's hard. Si peccasi negamus fallimor et nulla est in nobis veritas. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and there's no truth in us. Why then? Be like, we must sin, and so consequently die. Aye, we must die an everlasting death. What, what doctrine call you this? Que sera, sera, what will be, shall be, divinity, adieu. These metaphysics of magicians and necromantic books are heavenly. Lines, circles, scenes, letters and characters. Aye, these are those that Faustus most desires. Oh, what a world of profit and delight, of power, of honour, of omnipotence is promised to the studious artisan. All things that move between the quiet poles shall be at my command. Emperors and kings are but obeyed in their several provinces, nor can they raise the wind or rend the clouds, but his dominion that exceeds in this stretcheth as far as doth the mind of man. A sound magician is a mighty god. Hear, Faustus. Try thy brains to gain a deity. Sir? Wagner, commend me to my dearest friends, the German Valdis and Cornelius. Request them earnestly to visit me. I will, sir. Their conference will be a greater help to me than all my labours. Plod I ne'er so fast. upon thy head. Read, read the scriptures. That is blasphemy. Go forward, Faustus, in that famous art wherein all nature's treasury is contained. Be thou on earth as Jove is in the sky, Lord and, and commander, commander of, of these, these elements. elements. How am I glutted with conceit of this? Shall I make spirits fetch me what I please? Resolve me of all ambiguities. Perform what desperate enterprise I will. I'll have them fly to India for gold. Ransack the ocean for orient pearl. And search all corners of the newfound world for pleasant fruits and princely delicates. I'll have them fill the public schools with skill, wherewith the students shall be bravely clad. I'll levy soldiers with the coin they bring, and chase the Prince of Parma from our land, and reign sole king of all our provinces. Come, German Valdis and Cornelius, and make me blessed with your sage conference. <laughs> Valdis, sweet Valdis. Faustus! <laughs> and Cornelius! Faustus! <laughs> know that your words have won me at the last to practice magic and concealed arts. Yet not your words only, but mine own fantasy that will receive no object for my head, but ruminates on necromantic skill. Philosophy is odious and obscure, <laughs> hmm? 
Both law and physic are for petty wits. <laughs> Divinity is basest of the three. Unpleasant, harsh, contemptible and vile. Oh. Tis magic. Magic that hath ravished me. Then, gentle friends, aid me in this attempt, and I that have with concise syllogisms graveled the pastors of the German church will be as cunning as Agrippa was, whose shadows made all Europe honour him. Faustus, these books, thy wit and our experience shall make all nations to canonise us. As Indian Moors obey their Spanish lords, so shall the spirits of every element be always serviceable to us three. Like lions shall they guard us when we please, like Almain rutters with their horsemen's staves, or Lapland giants trotting by our sides, sometimes like women or unwedded babes, shadowing more beauty in their airy brows than in the white breasts of the Queen of Love. From Venice shall they drag huge argosies, and from America the golden fleece that yearly stuffs old Philip's treasury, if learned Faustus will be resolute. Well, this... As resolute am I in this as thou to live, therefore object it not. The miracles that magic will perform will make thee vow to study nothing else. He that is grounded in astrology, enriched with tongues, well seen in minerals, hath all the principles magic doth require. Then doubt not, Faustus, but to be renowned and more frequented for this mystery than heretofore the Delphian Oracle. The spirits tell me they can dry the sea and fetch the treasure of all foreign wrecks. Aye, all the wealth that our forefathers hid within the messy entrails of the earth. Then tell me, Faustus, what shall we three want? Nothing, Cornelius. Oh, this cheers my soul. Come, show me some demonstrations magical that I may conjure in some lusty grove and have these joys in full possession. Then haste thee to some solitary grove and bear wise bacons and Albanus works, the Hebrew Psalter and New Testament, and whatsoever else is requisite, we will inform thee ere our conference cease. Valdez, first let him know the words of art. And then, all other ceremonies learned, Faustus may try his cunning by himself. First I'll instruct thee in the rudiments, and then wilt thou be perfecter than I. Then come and dine with me, and after meat we'll canvas every quiddity thereof. <laughs> For ere I sleep I'll try what I can do. This night I'll conjure, though I die therefore. Now what's become of Faustus that was wont to make our schools ring with sick probo? Oh, oh, oh no, Sarah. Where's thy master? God in heaven knows. Why, just not thou who know? Oh, yes, I know, but that follows not. Yes, to Sarah. Ah. Oh, if you're jesting, and tell us where he is. Ah, that follows not necessary by force of argument. The Jew, being licentiate, should stand upon it. Therefore, acknowledge your error and be attentive. Well, then you will not tell us. <laughs> you are deceived, for I will tell you. Yet if you were not dunces, no, you would not ask me such a question. No, no, no. Well, for is not he corpus naturale, and is not that mobile? Then wherefore should you ask me such a question? But that I am by nature phlegmatic, <laughs> slow to wrath, and prone to lechery. <laughs> uh, to love, I would say. It were not for you to come within 40 foot of the place of execution. Although, I do not doubt to see you both hang the next session. <laughs> it does. Having triumphed over you, I will set my countenance like a precision and begin to speak thus. <laughs> Truly, my dear brethren, my master is within at dinner with Valdez and Cornelius, as this wine... If it could speak, it would inform your worships. 
And so the Lord bless you, preserve you, and keep you, my dear brethren, my dear brethren. <laughs> Nay, then, I fear he has fallen into that damned art for which they two are infamous through the world. Mm. Were he a stranger and not allied to me, yet should I grieve for him. Yeah. <clears throat> but come, mm. let us go and inform the rector and see if he, by his grave counsel, can reclaim him. Oh, but I fear me nothing can reclaim him. <laughs> yet let us try what we can do. Oh. <laughs> Now that the gloomy shadow of the earth, longing to view Orion's drizzling look, leaps from the Antarctic world unto the sky and dims the welkin with her pitchy breath, Faustus, begin thine incantations, and try if devils will obey thy hest, seeing thou hast prayed and sacrificed to them. Within this circle is Jehovah's name forward and backward, anagrammatized. The abbreviated names of holy saints, figures of every adjunct to the heavens and characters of signs and erring stars by which the spirits are enforced to rise. Then fear not, Faustus, but be resolute and try the uttermost magic can perform. Sint mihi dii acarontis propitiae. Valiet Numen Triplex Jehovi, Igniae, Aeriae, Aquitaini Spiritus Salvati, Orientis Princeps Beelzebub, Inferni Ardentis Monarcha, Et Demogorgon Propitiemus Vos, Ut Aperiat, Et Surgat, Mephistopheles! Quint you Mereris! Jehovam, Jehenam, et consecratum aquam, quam nunc spargo, signumque crucis quod nunc facio, et per vota nostra, ipse nunc surgat, nobis decatus, Mephistopheles! I charge thee to return and change thy shape! Thou art too ugly to attend on me. Go! And return an old Franciscan friar. That holy shape becomes a devil best. I see there's virtue in my heavenly words. Who would not be proficient in this art? How pliant is this Mephistopheles, full of obedience and humility. Such is the force of magic and my spells. Now, Faustus, thou art conjurer laureate that canst command great Mephistopheles. Queen Redis, Mephistopheles, fratris imagine. <sighs> now, Faustus, what wouldst thou have me do? I charge thee, wait upon me while I live, to do whatever Faustus shall command, be it make the moon drop from her sphere, or the ocean to overwhelm the world. I am a servant to great Lucifer, and may not follow thee without his leave. No more than he commands must we perform. Did not he charge thee to appear to me? No. I came now hither of mine own accord. Well, did not my conjuring speeches raise thee? Speak. That was the cause, but yet per accidents. For when we hear one rack the name of God, abjure the scriptures and his saviour Christ, we fly in hope to get his glorious soul. Nor will we come unless he use such means whereby he is in danger to be damned. Therefore the shortest cut for conjuring is stoutly to abjure the trinity and pray devoutly to the prince of hell. So Faustus hath already done and holds this principle. There is no chief but only Beelzebub, to whom Faustus doth dedicate himself. This word damnation terrifies not him, for he confounds hell in Elysium. His ghost be with the old philosophers. But leaving these vain trifles of men's souls, tell me, what is that Lucifer, my lord? Archregent, 
and commander of all spirits. Was not that Lucifer an angel once? Yes, Faustus, and most dearly loved of God. How comes it then that he's prince of devils? Oh, by aspiring pride and insolence, for which God threw him from the face of heaven. And what are you that live with Lucifer? Unhappy spirits that fell with Lucifer, conspired against our God with Lucifer, and are forever damned with Lucifer. Where are you damned? In hell. How comes it then that thou art out of hell? Why, this is hell, nor am I out of it. Thinks thou that I, who saw the face of God and tasted the eternal joys of heaven, am not tormented with ten thousand hells in being deprived of everlasting bliss? Oh, Faustus, leave these frivolous demands, which strike a terror to my fainting soul. Is great Mephistopheles so passionate for being deprived of the joys of heaven? <laughs> Learn thou of Faustus' manly fortitude, and scorn those joys thou never shalt possess. Go, bear these tidings to great Lucifer. Seeing Faustus hath incurred eternal death by desperate thoughts against Jove's deity, say... He surrenders up to him his soul, so he will spare him four and twenty years, letting him live in all voluptuousness, having thee ever to attend on me, to give me whatsoever I shall ask, to tell me whatsoever I demand, to slay mine enemies and aid my friends, and always be obedient to my will. Go and return to mighty Lucifer and meet me in my study at midnight. And then resolve me of thy master's mind. Faustus, I will. Had I as many souls as there be stars, I'd give them all for Mephistopheles. By him, I'll be great emperor of the world and make a bridge through the moving air to pass the ocean with a band of men. I'll join the hills that bind the Afric shore and make that country continent to Spain and both contributory to my crown. The emperor shall not live but by my leave, nor any potentate of Germany. Now that I have obtained what I desire, I'll live in speculation of this art till Mephistopheles returns again. boys with such a beard as I have, I'm sure. Boy, Quacker. <laughs> Sirrah, hast thou any comings in? Aye, and goings out too, you may see. Oh, look at that, not a cram in his pocket. Oh, alas, poor slave. See how poverty jests in his nakedness. Oh. With a villain is base and out of service, and so hungry that I know he would give his soul to the devil for a soldier of mutton, though it were blood raw. Hey, 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 not so, neither. I had need to have it well roasted and a good sauce to it, <laughs> if I'd pay so dear. I can tell you. Hey, hey, well, will thou serve me, Robin? And I'll make thee go like Queen. Mikey Disipolis. Oh, you are in verse? No, no, Sarah. In beaten silk and staves acre. Oh, 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 oh. Staves acre. That's good to kill vermin. Then be like, if I serve you, I shall be lousy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Why, why, why? So thou shalt be, whether thou dost it or no. For, Sarah, 
If thou leave thy jesting and bind thyself to me for seven years, I'll turn all the lice about thee into familiars, and they shall tear thee in pieces. <laughs> nay, sir, nay, you may save yourself that labour, for they're as familiar with me as if they'd paid for me meat and drink. I can tell you. <laughs> well... Sirrah, take these gilders. And what should I do with these, Sirrah? Why, now, Sirrah, thou art to be at an hour's warning, whensoever and wheresoever the devil shall fetch thee. Oh, no, Here, check your gilders, I'll none of them. Ah, truly, I'll none of them. Truly, but you shall. Uh, uh, bear witness, I gave them him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bear witness, I gave them him again. Well... I will cause two devils presently to fetch thee away. Balliol and Belcher. Let Balliol and Belcher come here and I'll give them something to fear. Since the day that they fell out of heaven to hell, no one has shaken their ears. No, no one has shaken their ears. Should I kill him? What would folks say? Twas him with the head full of beer. But the devil's quite dead from a thump on his head. I'm kill devil king of the play. Hey, kill devil king of the play. Oh, the devil's quite dead. Oh, the devil's quite dead, dead from a thump on his head. Of the He's play. Kill devil king of the play. I'm kill devil king of the play. And Belcher! <laughs> How now, Robin? Will you serve me now? Aye, good Wagner. We'll take away the devil then. Spirits, away! <laughs> now, Sirrah, follow me. I will, sir, but hark you, Master. Will you teach me this conjuring occupation? Aye, Robin. I will teach thee to turn thyself to a dog or a cat, or a mouse, or a rat, or anything. Hey, 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 hey. How? A Christian fella to a dog or a cat, a mouse or a rat? No, no, sir. If you turn me into anything, let it be in the likeness of a little pretty frisking flea, <laughs> that I may be here and there and everywhere. Oh, I'll tickle the pretty wenches plackets. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a monster, me face. <laughs> <laughs> Villain! <laughs> Call me Master Wagner and see you walk attentively and let thy left eye be diametrically fixed upon my right heel that thou mayst quasi vestigious nostres in seistere. Well, sir, I warrant you. Oh. Yeah! The devil's quite dead from a thump on his head. I'm kill devil king of the play. He's kill devil king of the play. Now, Faustus, must thou needs to be damned and canst thou not be saved? What boots it then to think of God or heaven? Away with such vain fancies and despair. Despair in God and trust in Beelzebub. Now, go not backward. No, Faustus, be resolute. Why waverest thou? Oh, something soundeth in mine ears. Abjure this magic. Turn to God again. Aye, and Faustus will turn to God again. To God? He loves thee not. The God thou serv'st is thine own appetite, wherein is fixed the love of Beelzebub. To him I'll build an altar and a church and offer lukewarm blood of newborn babes. <laughs> Contrition, prayer, repentance, what are these? Oh, 
contrition, prayer, repentance. Oh, foolish are the men that trust them most. Illusions, fruits of fancy, think of wealth. Contrition, prayer, repentance, think of wealth. Faustus, think of honor. Sweet Faustus, think of heaven. Contrition. Pray repentance. Think of wealth. Of honor. Of repentance. Think, think of, of wealth. Why, the signory of Emden shall be mine. When Mephistopheles shall stand by me, what god can hurt thee, Faustus? Thou art safe. Cast no more doubts. Come, Mephistopheles, and bring glad tidings from great Lucifer. It's not midnight. Come, Mephistopheles. Vini, vini, Mephistopheles. that I shall wait on Faustus whilst he lives, so he will buy my service with his soul. Already Faustus hath hazarded that for thee. But Faustus, thou must bequeath it solemnly and write a deed of gift with thine own blood, for that security craves great Lucifer. If thou deny it, I will back to hell. Stay, Mephistopheles, and tell me, what good will my soul do thy lord? Enlarge his kingdom. Is that the reason he tempts us thus? Solemon, Miseris, Socius, Abwissi Dolores. Why, have you any pain that torture others? As great as have the human souls of men. But tell me, Faustus, shall I have thy soul? And I will be thy slave and wait on thee, and give thee more than thou hast wit to ask. I, Mephistopheles, I'll give it him. Then stab thine arm courageously and bind thy soul that at some certain day great Lucifer may claim it as his own. And then be thou as great as Lucifer. Lo, Mephistopheles, for love of thee, I cut mine arm and with my proper blood assure my soul to be great Lucifer's. Chief Lord and Regent of Perpetual Night. View here the blood that trickles from mine arm and let it be propitious for my wish. But, Faustus, write it in manner of deed of gift. Aye, okay, so I will. But, Mephistopheles... My blood congeals, and I can write no more. I'll fetch the fire to dissolve it straight. What might the staying of my blood portend? Is it unwilling I should write this bill? Why streams it not that I may write fresh? Faustus gives to thee his soul. Ah, there is stayed. Why shouldst thou not? Is not thy soul thine own? Then write again. Faustus gives to thee his soul. <sighs> ah, see, Faustus, here is fire to set it on. So, now the blood begins to clear again. Now will I make an end immediately. Oh, what will not I do to obtain his soul? Consummatum est. This bill is ended, and Faustus hath bequeathed his soul to Lucifer. But what is this inscription on my arm? Homo fugi? Whither should I fly? If unto God he'll throw thee down to hell, my senses are deceived. Here's nothing writ. I see it. Here in this place is writ Homo Fuji. Yet shall not Faustus fly. I'll fetch him somewhat to delight his mind. Oh, <laughs> 
what means this show? Speak, Mephistopheles. Nothing, Faustus, but to delight thy mind withal, and to show thee what magic can perform. But may I raise up spirits when I please? Aye, Faustus, and do greater things than these. Then there's enough for a thousand souls. Here, Mephistopheles, receive this scroll, a deed of gift of body and of soul, and yet conditionally that thou perform all articles prescribed between us both. Faustus, I swear by hell and Lucifer to effect all promises between us made. Then hear me read them, Mephistopheles, on these conditions following. First, that Faustus may be a spirit in form and substance. Secondly, that Mephistopheles shall be his servant and at his command. Thirdly, that Mephistopheles shall do for him and bring him whatsoever. Fourthly, that he shall be in his chamber or house invisible. Lastly, that he shall appear to the said John Faustus at all times in what form or shape soever he pleases. I, John Faustus of Wittenberg, doctor by these presents, do give both body and soul to Lucifer, Prince of the East, and his minister Mephistopheles. And furthermore, grant unto them that four and twenty years being expired, the articles above written inviolate full power to fetch or carry the said John Faustus, body and soul, flesh, blood or goods, into their habitation wheresoever. By me, John Faustus. Speak, Faustus. Do you deliver this as your deed? I take it. And the devil give thee good aunt. <laughs> <laughs> now, Faustus, ask what thou wilt. First, will I question with thee about hell. Tell me, where is the place that men call hell? Under the heavens. Aye, so are all things else, but where about? Within the bowels of these elements where we are tortured and remain forever. Hell hath no limits nor is circumscribed in one self place. For where we are is hell, and where hell is, there must we ever be. And to conclude, when all the world dissolves and every creature shall be purified, all places shall be hell that is not heaven. Come, I think hell's a fable. Aye, think so still, till experience change thy mind. Why? Thinks thou then that Faustus shall be damned? Aye, of necessity, for here's the scroll, wherein thou hast given thy soul to Lucifer. Aye, and body too, but what of that? Thinks thou that Faustus is so fond to imagine that after this life there be any pain? Tush! These are trifles and mere old wives' tales. But Faustus, I am an instance to prove the contrary, for I am damned and am now in hell. How? Now in hell? Nay! And this be hell, I'll willingly be damned here. What? Walking? Disputing? <laughs> but leaving off this, let me have a wife, the fairest maid in Germany, for I am wanton and lascivious and cannot live without a wife. How? A wife? I prithee, Faustus, talk not of a wife. Nay, sweet Mephistopheles, fetch me one, for I will have one. Well, thou wilt have one. Sit there till I come. I'll fetch thee a wife in the devil's name. <laughs> Did someone want a wife? In faith. Let me give you anything you need. Demand of me. There's nothing I will do. Yeah. My tastes are very flexible. Could be more thrilling than a wife who is willing In lust I'm exciting, accessible, inviting Let me give you anything you need yeah. Just demand of me, there's nothing I will do yeah. My tastes are very flexible and indeed yeah. I'll touch and taunt and tease Casement, I'm in the bargain basement. I'll be more than enough. Just call me hard stuff. A 
tell, Faustus. How dost thou like thy wife? A plague on her for a hot whore. <laughs> oh, tart, Faustus. Marriage is but a ceremonial toy. If thou lovest me, think no more of it. I'll cull thee out the fairest courtesans and bring them every morning to thy bed. She whom thine eye shall like, thy heart shall have. Be she as chaste as was Penelope, as wise as Sabre, or as beautiful as was bright Lucifer before his fall. Hold. Take this book. Peruse it thoroughly. The iterating of these lines brings gold. The framing of this circle on the ground brings whirlwinds, tempests, thunder and lightning. Pronounce this thrice devoutly to thyself, and men in armour shall appear to thee, ready to execute what thou desirest. Thanks, Mephistopheles. Yet fain would I have a book wherein I might behold all spells and incantations that I might raise up spirits when I please. Here they are, in this book. Now would I have a book where I might see all characters and planets of the heavens that I might know their motions and dispositions. Here they are, too. Nay, let me have one book more, and then I have done, wherein I might see all plants, herbs and trees that grow upon the earth. Here they be. Oh, thou art deceived. Tart, I warrant thee. When I behold the heavens, then I repent and curse thee, wicked Mephistopheles, because thou hast deprived me of those joys. Why, Faustus, thinks thou heaven is such a glorious thing? I tell thee, tis not half so fair as thou, or any man that breathes on earth. How proves thou that? Twas made for man, that he is more excellent. If heaven was made for man, twas made for me. I will renounce this magic and repent. Faustus, repent. Yet God will pity thee. Thou art a spirit. God cannot pity thee. Who buzzeth in mine ears, I am a spirit. Be I a devil, yet God may pity me. Aye, God will pity me if I repent. Aye, but Faustus never shall repent. My heart so hardened, I cannot repent. Scarce can I name salvation, faith. Or heaven, but fearful echoes thunders in mine ears. Faustus, thou art damned. Then swords and knives, poison, guns, halters and envenomed steel are laid before me to dispatch myself. And long ere this I should have slain myself, had not sweet pleasure conquered deep despair. Have I not made blind Homer sing to me of Alexander's love and Enon's death? And hath not he that built the walls of Thebes with the ravishing sound of his melodious harp made music with my Mephistopheles? Why should I die then or basely despair? I am resolved. Faustus shall ne'er repent. Come, Mephistopheles, let us dispute again and argue of divine astrology. Tell me, are there many heavens above the moon? Are all celestial bodies but one globe, as is the substance of this centric Earth? As are the elements, such are the spheres mutually folded in each other's orb, and jointly move upon one axle tree, whose terminine is termed the world's wide pole. Nor are the names of Saturn, Mars, or Jupiter feigned, but are erring stars. But tell me, had they all one motion, both situate temporary? All jointly move from east to west in four and twenty hours upon the poles of the world, but differ in their motion upon the poles of the zodiac. Tush, these slender trifles far back and decide. Hath Mephistopheles no greater skill? <laughs> Who knows not the double motion of the planets? 
The first is finished in a natural day. The second, thus, as Saturn in 30 years, Jupiter in 12, Mars in 4, the Sun, Venus and Mercury in a year, the Moon in 28 days. Tush! These are freshmen's suppositions, but tell me, has every sphere a dominion or intelligentsia? Aye. How many heavens or spheres are there? Nine. The seven planets, the firmament, and the imperial heaven. Well, resolve me in this question. Why have we not conjunctions, oppositions, aspects, eclipses, all at one time, but in some years we have more, in some less? Por iniquela motum respectu tosius. Well, I am answered. Tell me, who made the world? I will not. Sweet Mephistopheles, tell me. Move me not, for I will not tell thee. Villain, have I not bound thee to tell me anything? Aye, that is not against our kingdom. But this is. Think thou on hell, Faustus, for thou art damned. Think, Faustus, upon God that made the world. Remember this. I go, accursed spirit, to ugly hell! Tis thou has damned, distressed Faustus' soul! It's not too late. Too late! Never too late if Faustus can repent. If thou repent, devil shall tear thee in pieces. Repent, and they shall never raise thy skin. Oh, Christ, my saviour! Seek to save distressed Faustus' soul! Save thy soul, for he is just. There's none but I have interest in the same. Oh, who art thou that looks so terrible? I am Lucifer, and this Beelzebub, renowned as my companion, fence in hell. Oh, Faustus, we are come to fetch away thy soul. We come to tell thee thou dost injure us. Thou talks of Christ. Contrary to thy promise. Thou shouldst not think of God. Think on the devil. And his damn too. Nor will I henceforth. Pardon me in this, and Faustus vows never to look to heaven, never to name God, or to pray to him, to burn his scriptures, slay his ministers, and make my spirits pull his churches down. <laughs> <laughs> Do so. And we will highly gratify thee. Faustus, we are come from hell to show thee some pastime. Sit down, and thou shalt see all the seven deadly sins appear in their proper shapes and likeness. That sight will be as pleasing unto me as paradise was to Adam, the first day of his creation. <laughs> Talk not of paradise nor creation, but mark this show. Go, Mephistopheles, fetch them in. Examine them of their several names and disposition. What art thou, the first? I am pride, and for parents have I none. 
It's with Ovid's tiny flea I belong. I can creep into every corner of a winch, scaling all her mountains in her forest island trench. And then, like her fan, I can kiss her dainty lips. Everywhere, all over, I can do what I list. But fie, what a smell is here! I'm overcome. Perfume the ground before I carry on. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> what art thou in a second? This is what I'm called. Ain't a swindler, ain't a fraud. Step right up upon the floor. Howdy there, we've met before. Choose your partner from your row. I can help you spend your dough. Swing around and keep in time. I'll invest your cents and dime. Those who don't, I'll take my hand. Dig your gold for Uncle Sam. I'm your partner. I don't cheat. As a hit, don't watch my feet. <laughs> take your corners from squares. Trust me with your stacks and shades. Nothing in this life is free. So pass your bucks. They stop with me. <laughs> what art thou, the third? I am wrath. Father and mother had I none. I leapt from a lion's mouth when scarce an hour old. Since then I have run up and down the world a rapier in my hand, wounding myself when I had nobody to fight. I was born in hell. Look to it, for some of you shall be my father. What art thou, the fourth? <laughs> Is my name and my game, it's a shame Step into my frame, be the same, play the game So hear my point of view I just I envy me, I envy you Envy me the way to be, I envy you My father was a chimney sweep, my mama on star white I cannot read, I can't spell, I cannot even write And I wish our books were burnt Cause it's best to be unlearned Envy me, I envy you, envy me Envy me, I envy you, envy me. I'm lean from seeing other people eat. It's not neat. A famine at this time would be fine. Quite sublime. And if everyone could die and not survive, I'd be alive. I'd be fat. I'd be full. I'd be free. Envy me, I envy you, envy me. Envy me, I envy you, envy me now, come on now. Envy me, I envy you, envy me. No way to be, but it's not true. I envy you, you envy me. No way to be, I envy you. Yeah, yeah. Em, bem, be. Em, bem, be. Come on now. Em, bem, bem, bem. Em, be. <laughs> Away, envious rascal. What art thou, the fifth? Oh, I shall. I am gluttony. <laughs> My parents are all dead, and a devil a penny they left me, but a bare pension. That is thirty meals a day. Ten devil. Nature. Oh, I came of a royal parentage. My great 
grandfather was a gammon of bacon, my grandmother a hog's head of claret wine. <laughs> my godfathers were these, Peter Pickle Herring <laughs> and Martin Martlemas Beef. But my godmother, she was a jolly gentlewoman and well beloved in every good town and city. Her name was Miss Marjorie Marchmere. <laughs> Thou hast heard all my progeny. Wilt thou bid me to supper? No, I'll see thee hanged. Thou will eat up all my victuals. Choke me. Choke thyself, <laughs> glutton. <laughs> what art thou, the sixth? Hey. I am so. I was begotten on a sunny bank where I have lain ever since. Hey, you have done me great injury to a Bring me from lands. Oh. Hey, let me be carried thither again by gluttony and lechery. <laughs> I'll not speak another word. For a king's ransom. What are you, Mistress Minx? The seventh and last. Who said? Oh, I said. Talk to me of food and I'll indulge you. <laughs> no one loves raw mutton more than me. <laughs> the texture, taste, and size are simply thrilling. <laughs> Place your order for the feeling. Yum, yum. Call me up. My name is Lechu. My soul! Tut, Faustus! In hell is all manner of delight. Oh, might I see hell and return again? How happy were I then! Faustus, thou shalt! At midnight, I will send for thee. Meanwhile, peruse this book and view it thoroughly, and thou shalt turn thyself into what shape thou wilt. Great thanks! Mighty Lucifer, this will I keep as cherry as my life. Farewell, Faustus, and think on the devil. Farewell, great Lucifer. Come, Mephistopheles! <laughs> Uh, mm. 
learned Faustus to find the secrets of astronomy graven in the book of Jove's high firmament did mount him up to scale Olympus' top. We're sitting in a chariot, burning bright, drawn by the strength of yoked dragons' necks. He viewed the clouds, the planets and the stars, the tropic zones and quarters of the sky. From east to west his dragons swiftly glide, and in eight days did bring him home again. Not long he stayed within his quiet house to rest his bones after his weary toil, but new exploit hailed him out again and mounted them upon a dragon, did them upon a dragon's back, whose wings did part the subtle air. Faustus was wont to prove cosmography. Having now, my good Mephistopheles, passed with delight the stately town of Trier, environed round with airy mountain tops, with walls of flint and deep entrenched lakes, not to be won by any conquering prince. From Paris next, coasting the realm of France, we saw the river Maine fall into Rhine. Thus, hitherto had Faustus spent his time. But tell me now, what resting place is this? Hast thou, as erst I did command, conducted me within the walls of Rome? I have, my Faustus. And for proof thereof, this is the goodly palace of the Pope. And, because we are no common guests, I choose his privy chamber for our use. Oh, Mephistopheles. <laughs> Nay, stay, my Faustus. I know you'd see the Pope and take some part in Holy Peter's feast. The which in state and high solemnity, this day is held through Rome and Italy in honour of the Pope's triumphant victory. Sweet Mephistopheles, thou pleasest me. Whilst I am here on earth, let me be cloyed with all things that delight the heart of man. My four and twenty years of liberty I'll spend in pleasure and in dalliance that Faustus' name, whilst this bright frame doth stand, may be admired throughout the furthest land. It is well said, Faustus. Come then, stand by me, and thou shalt see them come immediately. <laughs> I'm content to compass them some sport, and by their folly make us merriment. Then charm me that I may be invisible to do what I please, unseen of any whilst I stay in Rome. Let it be so, my Faustus. But first, stay and view their triumphs as they pass this way, and then devise what best contents thy mind by cunning in thine art to cross the Pope, or dash the pride of this solemnity to make his monks and abbots stand like apes <laughs> and point like antics at his triple crown to beat the beads about the friar's pates or clap huge horns upon the cardinal's heads, or any villainy thou canst devise, and I'll perform it, Faustus. Hark, they come. This day shall make thee be admired in Rome. Welcome, Lord Cardinals. Come, sit down. Lord Raymond, take your seat. Friars, attend, <laughs> and see that all things be in readiness as best beseems this solemn festival. <laughs> Lord Archbishop of Reims, sit down with us. I thank your holiness. <laughs> fall to, fall to. Fall to, and the devil choke you and you spare. <laughs> oh, no. Who's that which speak? Friars, look about. <laughs> Here's nobody, if it like, Your Holiness. <clears throat> My lord, here is a dainty dish was sent me from the Bishop of Milan. I thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, oh no. Who's that which snatched the meat from me? Will, will no man look? <laughs> My lord... This dish was sent me from the Cardinal of Florence. You say true. I'll have it. <laughs> oh, what a game. Uh, my lord, I'll drink to your grace. I'll pledge your grace. Oh, oh, I'm gone too. 
Ye lovers, look about. Oh, oh, oh. My lord, it may be some ghost oh, oh. newly crept out of purgatory, come to beg a pardon of your holiness. Maybe so. Friars, mm -hmm. prepare a dirge to lay the fury of this ghost. Oh. Once again, my lord, fall to... In the name of the Father... What? You're crossing of yourself. Well, use that trick no more, I would advise you. And of the Son. Well, there's the second time. Aware the third. I give you fair warning. And the Holy Ghost. Ah! Oh! Oh, I am slain! Help me, <laughs> what shall we do? Nay, I know not. We shall be cursed with bell, book, and candle. Now, bell, book, and candle, candle, book, and bell. Forward and backward to curse Faustus to hell. <laughs> Come, brethren, let's about our business with good devotion. <clears throat> Cursed be he that stole away his holiness meat from the table. Maledicat Dominus. And cursed be he that struck his holiness a blow on the face. <laughs> Maledicat Dominus. And cursed be he that took Friar Sandalo a blow on the page. <laughs> Maledicat Dominus. And cursed be he that took away our holiness's wife. Maledicat <laughs> Dominus. And cursed be he that disturbeth our holy duds. Maledicat Dominus, et omnes sancti, amen. stolen one of Dr. Faustus's conjuring books, and if faith, I mean to search some circles for my own use. Now will I make all the maidens in our parish dance at my pleasure, stark naked before me, and so by that means I shall see more than e'er I felt or saw yet, I can tell you. Robin! I thee! Robin! Keep out, keep out, or else you're blown up, you're dismembered. <gasps> Ralph! Keep out, for I am about a roaring piece of work. Why, Robin, what book is that? Thou canst not read. What book, what book? Why, the most intolerable book for conjuring that e'er was invented by any brimstone oh, devil. Oh, canst thou conjure with it? I can do all these things easily with it. Did I not tell thee, Ralph, we were forever made by this Dr. Faustus's book? But, Robin... We will best look that your devil can answer the stealing of this same cup. Huh? For look, the vintner follows us at the ardeals. It's no matter, let him come. And he follow us, I'll so conjure him as he was never conjured in his life, I warrant him. Let me see the cup. It is. Oh, yonder it comes. Are you fair? Now or never, I'm sure thy cunning. Oh, are you here? I'm glad I've found you. You're a couple of fine companions. Pray, where's the cup you stole from the tavern? How? How? We steal a cup? Take heed what you say. We look not like cup stealers, I can tell you. Never deny it, for I know you have it, and I'll search you. Search me? Aye, and spare not. Hold the cup, Ralph. Come, come, search me, search me. Come on, Sarah. Let me search you now. Aye, aye. Do, do. Hold the cup, Robin. <laughs> la, la, I la, fear la, not your searching. We scorn to steal your la, cups. La, la, la. Oh, never outface me for the matter. For sure the cups between you two are plague. Take you. Wait, Sarah. I'll teach you to impeach honest men. Oh. Ralph, make me a circle and stand close at my back and stir not for thy life. Finger, you shall have your cup and on. Oh. Say nothing, Ralph. Oh, 
Perseo, Demi Gorgon, Belcher and Mephistopheles! <laughs> you, princely legions of infernal rule! How am I vexed by these villains' charms? From Constantinople have they brought me now, only for pleasure of the damned slaves! <laughs> 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 He's a grumbler, good friend! <laughs> Sixpence for your supper and be gone. Well, villains, for your presumption, I transform thee into an ape and thee into a dog. And so be gone. An ape? Well, that's brave. I'll have fine sport with the boys. My head will never be out of the potty's pot. <laughs> When Faustus had, with pleasure, tamed the view of rarest things and royal courts of kings, he stayed his course, and so returned home, where such as bear his absence but with grief, I mean his friends and nearest companions, did gratulate his safety with kind words. And in their conference of what befell, touching his journey through the world and air, they put forth questions of astrology, which Faustus answered with such learned skill as they admired and wondered at his wit. Amongst the rest, the emperor was one, Carolus the Fifth. <laughs> Master Dr. Faustus, I have heard strange report of thy knowledge in the black art. How that none in mine empire, nor in the whole world, can compare with thee for the rare effects of magic. They say thou hast a familiar spirit, by whom thou canst accomplish what thou list. This, therefore, is my request, that thou let me see some proof of thy skill, that mine eyes may be witness to confirm what mine ears have heard reported. And here I swear to thee, by the honor of my imperial crown, that whatever thou doest, thou shalt be no ways prejudiced or endamaged. If faith, he looks much like a conjurer. <laughs> <laughs> my gracious sovereign, though I must confess myself far inferior to the report men have published, and nothing answerable to the honor of your imperial majesty, yet, for that love and duty bind me thereunto, I am content to do whatsoever your majesty shall command me. Then, Dr. Faustus, mark what I shall say. As I was sometimes solitary set within my closet, sundry thoughts arose about the honor of mine ancestors, how they had won by prowess such exploits, got such riches, subdued so many kingdoms, as we that do succeed, or they that shall hereafter possess our throne. Shall, I fear me, never attain to that degree of high renown and great authority? Amongst which kings is Alexander the Great, chief spectacle of the world's preeminence, the bright shining of whose glorious acts lightens the world with his reflecting beams. As when I hear but motion made of him, it grieves my soul I never saw the man. If, therefore, thou, by cunning of thine art, canst raise this man from hollow vaults below, where lies entombed this famous conqueror, and bring with him his beauteous paramour, both in their right shapes, gesture, and attire they used to wear during their time of life, thou shalt both satisfy my just desire and give me cause to praise thee whilst I live. My gracious lord, I am ready to accomplish your request, so far forth as by art and power of my spirit, 
I am able to perform. In faith, that's just nothing at all. But if it like your grace, it is not in my ability to present before your eyes the true substantial bodies of those two deceased princes, which long since are consumed to dust. I marry Master Doctor, now there's a sign of grace in you when you will confess the truth. <laughs> but such spirits as can lively resemble Alexander and his paramour shall appear before your grace in that manner that they best lived in, in their most flourishing estate, which I doubt not shall sufficiently content your imperial majesty. Go to, Master Doctor. Let me see them presently. Do you hear, Master Doctor? You bring Alexander and his paramour before the emperor. How then, sir? <laughs> Hey, Faith, that's as true as Diana turned me to a stag. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, but when Actaeon died, he left the horns for you. Mephistopheles, be gone. Nay, and you go to conjuring, I'll be gone. I'll meet with you anon for interrupting me so. Here they are. of those two deceased princes? Oh. <laughs> well, please, Your Highness, now to send for the knight that was so pleasant with me here of late. I want of you call Sir Rudolph. Sir Rudolph! Sir Rudolph! Sir Rudolph! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now, Sir Knight. <laughs> Why, I had thought thou hadst been a bachelor, but now I see thou hast a wife that not only gives thee horns, but makes thee wear them feel on thy head. <laughs> thou damned wretch and execrable dog, bred in the concave of some monstrous rock, how darest thou thus abuse a gentleman? Villain, I say, undo what thou hast done. Oh, not so far, sir. There's no haste but good. Hmm? Are you remembered how you crossed me in my conference with the Emperor? No. <laughs> I think I have met with you for it. <laughs> <laughs> good master doctor, at my entreaty, release him. He had done penance sufficient. <laughs> my gracious lord, not so much for the injury he offered me here in your presence as to delight you with some mirth hath Faustus worthily requited this injurious night. Which, being all I desire, I am content to release him of his horns. And Sir Knight, hereafter speak well of scholars. Hmm. Mephistopheles, transform him straight. <laughs> <laughs> now, my good lord, having done my duty, I humbly take my leave. Farewell, Master Doctor. Yet, ere you go, expect from me a bounteous reward. My lord. <laughs> The restless course that time doth run with calm and silent foot, shortening my days and thread of vital life, calls for the payment of my latest years. Therefore, sweet Mephistopheles, let us make haste to Wittenberg. But stay, Faustus, for who have we here? Some sport, I warrant. <laughs> I'm rocking for bargains of gilders to pay. Oh, 
For your horse. I cannot sell him so. Huh? If thou likest him for fifty, take him. <laughs> well, alas, sir, I have no more. <laughs> I pray you, sir, speak for oh, me. Let him have him. Yes. He is an honest fellow, and he has a great charge. Mm. Neither wife nor child. No. Come, <clears throat> give me your money. <laughs> well, I must tell you one thing before you have him. <laughs> Ride him not into the water at any hand. <laughs> Why, sir? Will he not drink of all waters? Oh, yes, he will drink of all waters, but ride him not into the water. Ride him over hedge or ditch, or where thou wilt, but not into the water. Well, well sir, now am I made man forever. I'll not leave my horse for forty. If he had but the quality of a ding-ding, a ding-ding... <laughs> I'd make a brave... The concave and some monstrous rock. The slick as an eel. <laughs> well... <laughs> Farewell, sir. Yes, but hark ye, sir, if this horse be sick or ill at ease, if I bring his water to you, you'll tell me what it is? Away, oh, you villain. What a sink I am, a horse, doctor. Folder <laughs> on, folder on, folder on me. Any question before it comes to me. What art thou, Faustus, but a man condemned to die? Fatal time doth draw to final end. Despair doth drive distrust into my thoughts. Confound these passions with a quiet sleep touch. <laughs> Christ did call the thief upon the cross. Then rest thee, Faustus. Uh, quiet in conceit. <laughs> was never such a doctor. He has given me a pagation, has purged me of forty dollars. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. I shall never see them more. <laughs> but yes, like an ass as I was, I would not be ruled by him. For he bade me, I should ride him into no water. Now, I, thinking my horse had had some rare quality that he would not have had me known of, I, like a venturous youth, rid him into the deep pond at the town's end. I was no sooner in the middle of the pond, but my horse vanished away, and I sat upon a bottle of hay, never so near drowning in my life. Yeah. Oh. Seek out my doctor and have my forty dollars again, or I'll make it the dearest horse. Oh, yonder is his snipper snapper. You hear? You! Hey, pass! Where's your master? Why, sir? But would you? You cannot speak with him. But I will speak with him. Why, fast asleep. Come some other time. I'll speak with him now, or I'll break his glass windows about his ears. I tell thee, he has not slept this eight nights. And he have not slept this eight weeks, I'll speak with him. Uh, uh, see where he is. Mm. Fast asleep. Oh, this is he. God save you, Master Doctor. Master Doctor, Master Doctor Fustian. 
Forty dollars! <laughs> Forty dollars for a bottle of hay! Why, thou seest to hear thee not? Oh, so ho ho! So ho ho! No? Will you not wake? I'll make you wake. I'll pull your leg out. I go. Give me Oh! 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 my leg! Sir. My leg! Yeah. Help me, Mr. Oh. Yeah. Alas, I am undone. What shall I do? Call the officers. My leg! My leg! He <laughs> has my leg! Come, villain, to the constable. Oh, Lord, let me go. I'll give you forty dollars more. Well, where be they? I have none about me. Come to my hostelry and I'll give them to you. I'll be gone. Yes. Quickly. Verily. Yes. I will see thee for soon. I'll be there. What? Is he gone? <laughs> <laughs> Farewell, he. Faustus has his leg again. And a horse quarter, I take it, a bottle of hay for his leg. Well, <laughs> this trick shall cost him forty dollars more. <laughs> <laughs> My master means to die shortly, for he hath given to me all his goods. And yet methinks, if the death were near, he would not banquet and carouse and swill amongst the students, as even now he doth, who are at supper with such belly cheer as Wagner ne'er behold in all his life. <laughs> well, see where they come. Belike the feast is ended. Master, Dr. Faustus, since our conference about fair ladies, <laughs> which was the beautifulest in all the world, we have determined with ourselves that Helen of Greece was the admirablest lady that ever lived. <laughs> Therefore, Master Doctor, if you will do us that favour as to let us see that peerless dame of Greece, whom all the world admires for majesty. We should think ourselves much beholding unto you. <laughs> Gentlemen, for that I know your friendship is unfeigned, and Faustus' custom is not to deny the just requests of those that wish him well, <laughs> you shall behold that peerless dame of Greece. Oh. <laughs> no otherwise for pomp and majesty than when Sir Paris crossed the seas with her and brought the spoils to rich Dardania. <laughs> Be silent, then. Hmm? For danger... Is in words. Too simple is my wit to tell her praise, whom all the world admires for majesty. No marvel then the angry Greeks pursued with ten years' war the rape of such a queen, whose heavenly beauty passeth all compare. Since we have seen the pride of nature's works and only paragon of excellence, let us depart, and for this glorious deed, happy and blessed be Faustus evermore. Gentlemen, farewell. The same I wish to you. Gentle Faustus, leave this damned art, this magic that will charm my soul to hell and quite believe thee of salvation. Though thou hast now offended like a man, do not persevere in it like a devil. Yet, yet thou hast an amiable soul. If sin by custom grow not into nature, then Faustus will repentance come too late. Then thou art banished from the sight of heaven. 
<sighs> no mortal can express the pains of hell. Maybe this, my exhortation, seems harsh and all unpleasant. Let it not. For, gentle son, I, I speak it not in wrath or envy of thee, but in tender love and pity of thy future misery. And so have hope that this, my kind rebuke, checking thy body, may amend thy soul. Where art thou, Faustus? Wretch, what hast thou done? Damned art thou, Faustus, damned. Despair and die. Hell claims his right, and with a roaring voice says, Faustus, come, thine hour is almost come. Faustus, come. Thine hour is come. And Faustus now will come to do thee right. Uh, stay, good Faustus, stay thy desperate steps. I see an angel hovers o'er thy head and with a vial full of precious grace offers to pour the same into thy soul. Then call for mercy and avoid despair. Oh, friend. I feel thy words to comfort my distressed soul. Leave me a while to ponder on my sins. I go, sweet Faustus, but with grief of heart, fearing the enemy of thy hapless soul. Accursed Faustus, where is mercy now? I do repent, and yet... I do despair. Hell strives with grace for conquest in my breast. What shall I do to shun the snares of death? Thou traitor, Faustus! I arrest thy soul for disobedience to my sovereign lord. Revolt! Or I'll in peace meal tear thy flesh. Sweet Mephistopheles, entreat thy lord to pardon my unjust presumption, and with my blood again I will confirm my former power made to Lucifer. Do it then quickly with unfeigned heart, lest greater danger to attend thy drift. Torment, sweet friend, that base and crooked age that durst dissuade me from thy Lucifer, with greatest torments that our hell affords. His faith is great. I cannot touch his soul. But what I may afflict his body with, I will attempt, which is but little worth. One thing, good servant, let me crave of thee to glut the longing of my heart's desire that I may have unto my paramour that heavenly Helen which I saw of late, whose sweet embracings may extinguish clean these thoughts that do dissuade me from my vow and keep mine oath I made to Lucifer. Faustus, this, or what else thou shalt desire, shall be performed in twinkling of an eye. soul again. Here will I dwell, for heaven be in these lips. <laughs> and all is dross that is not Helena. 
I will be Paris. And for love of thee, instead of Troy shall Wittenberg be sacked. And I will combat with weak Menelaus and wear thy colors on my plumed crest. Yea, I will wound Achilles in the heel and then return to Helen for a kiss. Fairer than the evening air, clad in the beauty of a thousand stars. Brighter art thou than flaming Jupiter when he appeared to hapless Semele. More lovely than the monarch of the sky in wanton Arethusa's azured arms. And none but thou shall be my paramour. Cursed Faustus, miserable man, that from thy soul excludes the grace of heaven and flies the soul of his tribunal seed. Ah, Satan begins to sift me with his pride, as in this furnace God should try my faith. My faith, my hell shall triumph over thee. Ambitious fiend, see how the heaven smiles at your repulse and laughs your stake to scorn. Hence, hell, for hence I fly unto my God. Say, Wagner, thou hast perused my will. How dost thou like it? Oh, sir, so wondrous well was in all humble duty I do yield my life and lasting service for your love. And grand mercies, Wagner. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, no, worthy Faustus. <gasps> we think your looks are changed. What ails, Faustus? Ah, my sweet chamber fellow. Had I lived with thee, then had I lived still, but now I die eternally. Look, sirs, comes he not? Comes he not? What means, Faustus? Belike he is grown into some sickness by being over solitary. If it be so, we'll have some physicians to cure him. Tis but a surfeit, never fear, man. A surfeit of deadly sin that hath damned both body and soul. And yet, Faustus, look up to heaven, remember God's mercies are infinite. But Faustus' offence can ne'er be pardoned. The serpent that tempted Eve may be saved, but not Faustus. Ah, gentlemen, hear me with patience and tremble not at my speeches, though my heart pants and quivers to remember that I have been a student here these thirty years. Oh, would I never seen Wittenberg, never read book, and what wonders I have done! All Germany can witness, yea, all the world, for which Faustus hath lost both Germany and the world, yea, heaven itself, heaven, the seat of God, the throne of the blessed, the kingdom of joy. And must remain in hell forever. Hell. <laughs> ah, hell. Forever. Sweet friends, what shall become of Faustus being in hell forever? Yet, Faustus, call on God. On God, whom Faustus hath abjured. Oh. On God, whom Faustus hath blasphemed. Ah, oh, my God, I could weep, but the devil draws in my tears. Gush forth blood instead of tears, yea, life and soul. Oh, he stays my tongue. I would lift up my hands, but see, they hold them, they hold them. <laughs> oh, oh. Lucifer and Mephistopheles, ah, gentlemen, I gave them my soul for my cunning. God forbid. God forbade it indeed, but Faustus has done it. For vain pleasure of four and twenty years has 
Faustus lost eternal joy and felicity. I writ them a bill with mine own blood. The date is expired. The time will come, and he will fetch me. Why did not Faustus tell us of this before? The divines might have prayed for thee. Oft have I thought to have done so, but the devil threatened to tear me in pieces if I named God, to fetch both body and soul if I once gave ear to divinity. And now tis too late. Gentlemen, away, lest you perish with me. Oh, what shall we do to say, Faustus? Talk not of me, but save yourself and depart. God will strengthen me. I will stay with Faustus. Oh, tempt, tempt not God, sweet friend, but let us into the next room and there pray for him. Aye, aye, pray for me, pray for me, and what noise soever ye hear, come not unto me, for nothing can rescue me. Pray thou, and we will pray that God may have mercy upon me. Gentlemen, farewell. If I live till morning, I'll visit you. If not, Faustus is gone to hell. Well, 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 well. No! Fond worldling. Now his heart blood dries with grief. His conscience kills it. And his laboring brain begets a world of idle fantasies to overreach the devil. But all in vain. His store of pleasures must be sourced with pain. Aye, Faustus, now thou hast no hope of heaven, therefore despair. Think only upon hell, for that must be thy mansion there to dwell. Oh, thou bewitching fiend, t'was thy temptation hath robbed me of eternal happiness. I do confess it, Faustus, and rejoice. T'was I that... When thou wert in the way to heaven, damned up thy passage. Oh. When thou took'st the book to view the scriptures, then I turned the leaves and led thine eye. What? Weep thou! Tis too late! Despair! Farewell! Fools that will laugh on earth must weep in hell. <laughs> If thou hadst given ear to me, innumerable joys had followed thee. But thou didst love the world. Gave ear to me, and now must take hell's pains perpetually. Oh, what will all thy riches, pleasures, pomps avail thee now? Nothing but vex thee more to want in hell that had on earth such store. <laughs> Celestial happiness, pleasures unspeakable, bliss without end. Hadst thou affected sweet divinity, hell or the devil had had no power on thee. Hadst thou kept on that way, Faustus, behold, in what resplendent glory thou hadst sat in yonder throne, like those bright shining saints and triumphed over hell. That hadst thou lost. And now, must thy good angel leave thee? The jaws of hell are open to receive thee. Now, Faustus, let thine eyes with horror stare into that vast perpetual torture house. There are the fairies tossing damned souls on burning forks. Their bodies boil in lead. There are live quarters broiling on the coals that ne'er can die. This ever-burning chair is for all tortured souls to rest them in. These that are fed with sops of flaming fire were gluttons and loved only delicates and laughed to see the poor starve at their gates. But yet all these are nothing. Thou shalt see ten thousand tortures at more honey be. I've seen enough to torture me! Nay, thou must feel them, taste the smart of all. He that loves pleasure must for pleasure fall. And so I leave thee, Faustus, till anon. Then wilt thou tumble in confusion. <laughs> Thus 
of infernal dis do we ascend to view the subjects of our monarchy, those souls which sin seals the black sons of hell, among which, as chief Faustus, we come to thee, bringing with us lasting damnation to wait upon thy soul. <sighs> the time is come. Which makes it forfeit. And in this gloomy night, here in this room, will wretched Faustus be, and here we'll stay, to mock him how he doth demean himself. Ah, oh, Faustus, now hast thou but one bare hour to live, and then thou must be damned perpetually. Stand still, you ever-moving spheres of heaven. The time may cease, and midnight never come. Fair nature's eye, rise, rise again, and make perpetual day. Or let this hour be but a year, a month, a week, a natural Day that Faustus may repent and save his soul. Oh, lenti, lenti, curiti, noctis, equi. The stars move still. Time runs, the clock will strike, the devil will come. And Faustus must be damned. Oh, a leap up to my God! Who pulls me down? See, see where Christ's blood streams in the firmament. One drop would save my soul. Half a drop. Oh, my Christ. Ah! Rend not my heart for naming of my Christ. Yet will I call on him. Ah! Oh, spare me, Lucifer. Where is it now? Is gone, and see where God stretcheth out his arm and bends his ireful brows. Mountains and hills, come, come and fall on me and hide me from the heavy wrath of God. No, no, then will I headlong run into the earth, earth, gape. Oh no, it will not harbor me. You, stars that reigned at my nativity, whose influence hath allotted death and hell, now draw up Faustus like a foggy mist into the entrails of yon laboring cloud, that when you vomit forth into the air, my limbs may issue from your smoky mouths, so that my soul may but ascend to heaven. Ah... Uh... Half the hour is past. It will all be past anon. O oh God, if thou wilt not have mercy on my soul yet, for Christ's sake, whose blood hath ransomed me, impose some end to my incessant pain. Let Faustus live in hell a thousand years, a hundred thousand, and at last be saved. Oh, no end is limited to damned souls. Why wert thou not a creature wanting soul? Or why is this immortal that thou hast? Ah, Pythagoras metempsychotis, were that true, this soul should fly from me, and I be changed unto some brutish beast. All beasts are happy, for when they die, their souls are soon dissolved in elements. But mine must live still to be plagued in hell. Cursed be the parents that engendered me! Now, Faustus, curse thyself. Curse Lucifer that hath deprived thee of the joys of heaven. Oh, it strikes. It strikes. Now, body, turn to air, or Lucifer will bear thee quick to hell. <laughs> Soul, be changed into little water drops and fall into the ocean, ne'er be found. Oh, my God, 
My God, look not so fierce on me. Adders and serpents, let me breathe a while. Ugly hell, gape not. Come not, Lucifer. I'll burn my books. No! Cut is the branch that might have grown full straight, and burned is Apollo's laurel bough that sometime grew within this learned man. Faustus is gone. Regard his hellish fall, whose fiendful fortune may exhort the wise only to wonder at unlawful things, whose deepness doth entice such forward wits to practice more than heavenly power permits. In The Tragical History of Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe, dramatised for radio by Sue Wilson, Stephen Moore played Dr. Faustus and Philip Voss Mephistopheles. Robin the Clown was played by Barry Rutter and The Old Man was Maurice Denham. Lucifer was John Hollis, The Bad Angel, Michael Tudor Barnes and The Good Angel, Teresa Gallagher. David Thorpe played Wagner, Roth, and Sir Rudolph. Lawrence Evans, the Emperor, Covetousness, and Ralph. John Webb, Valdez, the Vintner, and Pride. David Monaco, Cornelius, and the Scholar. And Jill Graham, Beelzebub, and Gluttony. The She-Devil Wife and Lechery were sung by Liza Sadovy and Envy by Lorna Laidlaw. The advocate was Keith Drinkle, the Pope, Sloth and the Scholar, John Fleming, the Horse Courser and Scholar, John Badley, and the Archbishop and Scholar, John Evitz. The music was composed by Anthea Gomez and played by Anthea Gomez and Tim New. The tragical history of Dr. Faustus was directed by Sue Wilson.